Hi everybody, this is Harmony with Harmony Stitches and welcome to my channel. Here we talk about my crafting journey, which usually revolves around cross stitch with some knitting and crochet thrown in. Haven't talked about crochet in quite a while, but that's okay. Um, I haven't been here, I think in, I think three weeks. I think it's been since I posted my last video. Um, life is just, um, it's more of the schedule. Um, I am having st continued struggles with finding the time on Sundays to um, film a video and then get it posted. So you will see a video as often as I can get them in. Nothing's necessarily wrong. It's just Sundays are a lot more packed than what they used to be for some reason. I just feel busier. So thank you for being patient and waiting for another video. Um, if you're new here, I so appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to give me a try. I hope that you stick around and wait for things because you know I never know what I'm going to work on. Um, I always say I'm going to, you know, I plan on doing this, this, and this, but I don't always stick with my plans. So whether you're new here or returning, I do thank you for taking time out of your schedule to watch my video when there's so many others that you could have chosen. I do appreciate it. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I do have two things that I do no longer have in my possession. And if the technology allows me to do so, because you know, I always have tech issues as well. I will insert photos. One is the flag socks I was knitting. I gave them to a coworker because she was encouraging me to get them done. And I figured it would be, I don't really need the socks. Um, not that she needs the socks either, but I thought it would be a nice thing to do to give them away. So I did take a couple of pictures of those and I will post one if I can. And then I also took the little B from Amy Brucken Designs that I stitched last year or earlier this year, was it? I don't really remember. Um, I took the time to stitch it and stuff it and put it on a stick and I took that to work so I don't have it here, but I did take a picture of it when I got it all stuffed up. So I'll put that if I can. And then I have one more finish. I have all of my projects that I worked on in this bag. So if I keep reaching or making some noise, it is, it's me getting into the bag. So I have not put wove in the ends or blocked this yet, but I do have the Harvest Cardigan by Tin Can Knits finished. Um, it turned out really well and I'm hoping that blocking it will make all the stitches lie a little bit better and everything, but um, just so you can get the gist, here is Harvest. Um, I actually used some tips and tricks out of the Patty Lyons um, knitting bag of tricks to help me with the armholes and they look pretty darn good compared to some of the other sweaters I've made. So, and little tiny sleeves. They're not laying very well right now, so I'm hoping, like I said, when it blocks, gets blocked. Um, here's the, the armholes. Isn't that pretty good? I think this was my first one and I have to work on the tension on the corners because it will zip it right up a little bit, but that is the best armhole ever. So I'm super happy about that. And I just have a, six ends, I think, to weave in. Um, so all finished. And this is using um, Patton's Classic Wool and Old Gold. So I have that done. Needs to be washed still. Okay, so then what? What did I work on? I have no idea what this is. Oh, um, Whip Go. Um, Whip Go. The first two I'm going to show you are Whip Go. What am I saying? I don't know. So I found that I had several colors for this, but I didn't have the ones that I needed necessarily. All the colors that I needed for the section. So I did get my 500 stitches done, but you may not be able to see it. This is on 18 count Ada. And here are my stitches. It's in white and 819, which is a very pale pink. So I did my 500 stitches and this is Flag by Tiana Handmade from Etsy. She's a Ukrainian designer. 
and I bought this along with a couple others when the invasion happened and I am excited about working on this and it's weird because it is a it is kind of confetti um stitching because of the different colors because it's like a watercolor um it, again if I have room I will put in a picture of what it looks like but it is a watercolor um, piece so there is some confetti but I did enjoy working on that okay and then the other whip go in, in my whip go pieces I put in 500 stitches before I move on um, I had this Jamlin kit called joy in the journey and I put 500 stitches in this it came with this 14 count Ada and all of the fabric um, that I needed for it or floss it came with the 14 count Ada and the floss it even gave me a needle so this is what I have done I started here in the middle just because I wasn't sure um, if the piece was big enough what the margins were because it didn't really say in the instructions so I started and I did half of this line here went over and I did some things and then I came back into the other half this way just to finish the line up and then I was working on different things and I think I may have put in slightly more than the 500 because I wanted to get the fence done up here so then the house is here so I wanted to get the fence so it went pretty quickly so I know the next time that this comes up on the wheel or whatever, then it will, I know that 500 stitches will go fast. Um, remember back in the day when I first started and I would spin the wheel and I would work on the thing for a whole week and now I work on the, when I spin the wheel, I work on it for 500 stitches and I move on. That's so crazy because I could get so much progress done in a week. Okay, so this is, I'm, I'm not going to talk. Too much about this i'll give you the details but most of it's going to be a surprise it is a christmas present um it's on 28 count white ada it's using uh 310 yeah 310 it's i can tell because it's just in a ball in the bottom of the bag and c8116 which is the etoile for 816 um, and it's the sparkly, of course, that's what each wall is. And this is something I designed myself. Um, so I'm really happy about it. And this is what I have done so far. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what it says, um, right now, because it is a surprise, but you will see it when it's finished. I haven't worked on this in a couple weeks, so I need to get back to it and put a couple more strands in before. Um, I'm not finding the E12 very easy to work with. Um, it's not horrible, but it's not it's not regular DMC, that's for sure. So I this is the E12 and this is black, and I will tell you more later. Okay. All right. So then I moved on to. I was feeling. I think it was last Sunday, uh, so today is August 20th, so last Sunday was the 13th, I was feeling really bummy. Have you ever had one of those days that you kind of feel like blah, and you just sit there, and you do nothing, and you're like, why, why do I feel like this when, in like, in my brain, like, I knew that I wanted to be working on something, but I didn't almost all day. And then what I did, just out of the blue, I sat up in my chair and I said, okay, I'm gonna make sure that my whip wheel is updated with all of my projects, including my whip goes that I started, and I'm going to start the wheel again. And I did, and I feel a lot better. And I have no idea why I really felt like that, but I think maybe some of the life events that I've been experiencing, plus it's really busy at work right now, I think it was just all kind of weighing on me and um so the wheel did it. I don't I don't know why, but it did and here we go. So I have four projects so far. I'm still working on the third one, but we'll get there. So project number 1 was Happy Fall by Tiana Handmade from Etsy and oh no, it wasn't. Yes, it was. I just have them mixed up. 
I think. I think I just have them mixed up. Yeah. Okay. Happy Fall by Tiana Handmade. Um, and before when you saw this, I basically just had Happy Fall done. And now I have some outlines of pumpkins. So it's really exciting. It's coming to life. So I have a start on an orange pumpkin and a teal pumpkin. And I did find that I had I I did put one row, which you may not be able to see it, of this, it's 712. I put some down on the bottom before I started or before I ended last time. I needed just a few stitches to end my 500. And when I was going this time, I started, I did a little bit more down here and then started working on this teal pumpkin. Then I came over and started the orange pumpkin. I'm like, something is not right. I, I had some of my stitches one row up. So the orange pumpkin or the teal pumpkin is in its proper spot. The orange pumpkin is in its proper spot, but overall, um, everything is down one too many, right? I think so. Yeah, I think. Because I I was not going to take out all of the teal pumpkin to fix to fix the 712, so I left it. And there was enough stitches between the words and the pumpkins where it wouldn't matter if I was down one row or not. So I just left everything be and I moved everything. Um, I took out the few stitches that I needed to and then I got that orange pumpkin started. And there's more of that orange color, but I got my 500 stitches in, so I moved on. Um, this is on 18 count oatmeal that I, I found a scrap big enough, just big enough for this. Um, and I don't have all the colors yet either because it uses like 20 some colors, but I have enough to work on that orange. I kind of ran out of colors to work on the teal pumpkin, so I moved on to the orange one. And I have a few of those colors, just a few, so I can get more stitches in next time. Okay, um, I put that in the wrong. Oh no, you know why I'm messed up? Because I had these two projects in the opposite bag and then I switched them because I found that my 11 by 11 Q-snap fits in here, just barely fits in here and you fold this over the top and zip it up and it's good. So I was able to take my Q-snap to work and work on this project, which is The Office by Stitch Area. And this is just, fun little things from the show, The Office, and I worked um, 500 stitches. So this is what it looks like so far. Um, let's see, so I'm missing a letter over here. Um, some back stitching there. Um, half of, this is Dwight over here, Dwight's bobblehead, missing some there. But then this time what I did was put in this, this red block and then stitch to beat. It will get back stitching in the leaves to make it look leafy, but all of that was just over 500 stitches. And I just did it because I had a couple more stitches in the leaf to do, so I figured I might as well finish it off and be done. This is a hand dyed fabric. It's 28 count Lugana, but I have, I don't remember what color it is. Um, it was written on my receipt from the store, but I think I threw it away because that's just how I roll. So I have all of the colors for this. I'm just using all DMC. I mean, all of the projects that you've seen so far use all DMC. And that's usually what I do just to save on the budget. Every once in a while, I will get a overdyed. Okay, the next one is Witching Hour by the Prairie Schooler. And I found a mistake on this too, which I think I found at the end of last time, but I didn't fix it, which was silly. Because then when I came upon the mistake this time, I'm like, what did I do? And then I quickly remembered that it was there before and um, I didn't fix it. And I'm using the DMC on this too. And usually on most projects from the Prairie Schooler, I don't change the colors, but I don't like the 3371. Um, I like just 310 instead. So I'm not using the 3371 for the bulk of the color. Um, and I worked... 100% on the house, the, the house, and it's not done yet. So let's see the stem on the pumpkin. I put in some of the windows and then I just started working upward. So I got in 500 stitches and I put it all in the house. Almost finished though. I have to put the roof here 
a roof here, and then fill in all the rest of the windows, and the house is done. 500 stitches. This is 28 Count Monaco, I believe, in antique white that I was able to get from an online supplier, and the supplier is completely out because, of course, they don't make that on the bolt anymore, so she doesn't have any more. All right, this is the project that came up uh, last night. I have 416 stitches, so I only have 84 to go. It's from the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher, summer of 2021. And I will find the picture here quick. Maybe not quick. I don't have the page marked, so. Ah. It's Buffalo Plaid Summer by Stitching with the Housewives. And I am reaching 50%, reaching toward 50%. The 84 stitches that I have to put in will not get me quite to 50%, but I'm getting there. Okay, so Buffalo Plaid Summer. I had a couple of stitches up here on the flower that I did not have done. I finished that. I put in the, finished the um, center of the flower. I did not have the S finished. I finished that, and now I'm just putting in stitches in the border. Because I could do that while my husband was driving at church for the for the church um, ministry. So that was an easy thing to do is because you're just doing buffalo plaid. Um, I'm not stitching any of the black stitches. You can if you want, but I'm not going to because uh, I'm going to go lazy on this one. So reaching there, reaching. So I'll probably continue to do, um, I was, I'll probably continue to do the, it's only two strands on the border. So... I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna spin the wheel and see what's next. So that is all of my stitching. All, all of, oh, I was gonna say all of my stitching and all of my knitting, but I forgot this project in my little bag that I got from Petoskey. Um, I started my daughter's sweater. If I can, I'll put in a picture because I do not have the picture printed out. Um, I need to pull some yarn here so I can hold it up. This is using Cascade 220 fingering. Um, it's the thing. It's such a fine fingering. It's almost. It feels like um, lace weight or something. So this is what I have so far. This is one by one rib, and then this is the pattern. This you make two, and then you sew them together, and then you do sleeves and all kinds of weird. This is from 1940s, so I am not familiar at all with the construction, but I'm doing it for her. Um, you repeat the pattern five times, so I just did one row of the um, third third repeat. Um, this one, I struggle with this one because it doesn't have any sizing on it. I had to ask the person that I bought the pattern from um, about the sizing, and she said it was 34, a finished bust of 34 inches. And I'm like, okay, okay, I can, we can make that work, I think. And, um, and so I did a gauge swatch just to find out, and it was huge. It was three, with the, the needles that the pattern is modeled after, you know, like the, the model stitch is, was a, a UK number nine and a UK 12. So I'm doing doing the, the thing, I did the repeat, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's three inches longer than what it's supposed to be. So I said, okay, I'm gonna go down needle size. Well, I'm like, if I just go down one needle size, I don't think that's going to be enough. So I went down two needle sizes. I think I'm using a size three. Yes, a size three. Well, that was supposed to be for the body. In the ribbing, I was supposed to use a smaller size, so I would have used a size one. I completely forgot and to change my needles after I did my gauge swatch and I just went to town and I said, I'm not ripping all of this out. It took me a week to do the ribbing, just the ribbing. And I said, I'm not ripping it all out. So I talked to my daughter and we kind of thought, okay, it'll be fine, just keep going. So I'm just gonna use the same needle for the entire thing, but I'm happy with how it's turning out so far. You wanna see again? Okay, so it's this lacy pattern, lacy diamonds. And I'm super excited. And I don't know what color this is. I don't know if, if Cascade even has colors. Oh, it's right here. Let's see. It's right 
it's all sitting right here. Cascade fingering, uh, 220 fingering. Let's see. It says color 9429. It's just like a dark, it's just like dark green, a dark olive green. So I, I bought nine skeins of it and I'm, I did my gauge swatch and then this and I still have this much of it left. So it says eight ounces. The original pattern says eight ounces of the three ply wool. Um, but I don't know what that equates to this. The, the person that I got it from lives in the UK and she knits all these vintage classic designs from the 30s, 40s, and 50s. And she said that fingering, 220 fingering is the closest that you're going to get to the called for yarn. So I'm hoping that it will work out perfectly. And I won't be mad if it's a little bit big because I was kind of worried that the 34 bust might be a little bit too small. So I'm good with a higher, uh, a bigger sizing because it had no sizing on it. It just said what your, it had like this little tiny schematic on the bottom and it said what the pieces were supposed to measure at, but that didn't, it didn't give you an overall size or a bust measurement. And I'm like, how is that helpful? Whatever. But overall, the 1940s pattern, I'm, I'm finding it very easy. I'm, I have not, besides the needles, I haven't really found a problem with it yet. And that was just me. That wasn't even the pattern. Okay. And I have one purchase. Um, Lolo did it, dyed some yarn to celebrate the Barbie movie and I had the spending money and I just had to do it. So, um, they're called Psycho Barbie and Psycho Ken and I just had to, um, Barbie, Ken, and they both kind of have hints of the other color. So this one has hints of pink and purple and this one has hints of the gray and I know exactly what I'm going to knit with this and I will show you when I get started, but I really have to do my daughter's sweater first, but this is calling my name and it's so soft. It's different than that wool. The wool is soft, but this is, I mean, this is wool too. This is, um, mm -hmm. 85% extra fine superwash merino wool and 15% nylon. I bought it because I, you know, I like this. This is plush sock, I think, her base. No, it's low original. I lied. It's low original. All right. So that's all I bought. I am completely out of money. And so I won't be buying anything anytime soon. Um, and that's all the projects. So I'm going to continue spinning the wheel. But I also have to work on that kind of halfway secret project. Because I need to get that done as well. And I think that's all I don't see any knitting in and I might pluck away at my daughter's sweater for a little bit this month but um um on October in October beginning of October I am have the plan is that I'm having surgery everything's all scheduled I just have to have um some blood work done and another test no nothing's wrong don't worry nothing's wrong it's just something that is a long time coming and it will help uh, bring the quality of life back for me. Um, cause the, I went to the doctor at the end of June and she to talk about the migraines that were happening. I thought they were just headaches. She, I was there with her for an hour. She said they were migraines. Um, she, that I was on a medication that she, she said, I suspect it's from the medication and you need to stop it immediately. Um, come to find out the medicine was causing me to be at risk for a heart attack and stroke anyway, on top of the migraines. So we are proceeding, the, the surgery is, I was taking medicine for a reason to help with something, but now I have to have the surgery because the medicine is no longer an option. N I promise nothing bad, I'm okay, um, but that means that I may not be able to come back. I don't know how I film upstairs and I definitely won't be able to come upstairs. And even if I can, like if I'm cleared to come upstairs, I'm probably not going to. Um, I'm going to save my energy for better things. Um, and coming upstairs, like the, the physical act of climbing the stairs is not going to happen. 
Um, if I feel up to it, I will film in October, but I will be filming from a different location so I don't have to come up here. But if you don't see me in October and I don't come back around until November, just know I'm okay. I'm just recovering and I'm not finding the energy. Um, on top of all of that, and we finally were able to bury my mom's ashes yesterday on the 19th. Um, there was all of that and some family drama involved. My boss is retiring. Um, my boss is a superintendent of a school district. And so that means I, um, I have to support the search consultants with anything that they need. And we will have some long nights. So I think just, and, and the, the beginning of the school year is coming. So I think just with all the things, um, that may have been the reason why I was feeling so bummy last week, but I may not have that energy to come back until November. Um, I mean, after I have the surgery, I obviously have plans to come back at least once in September. We'll see how it goes, but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up in case something uh, life happens again and I'm not able to come back in September that I am okay. I just won't be here when you probably expect me in October and I will be back in November. Okay. So I just wanted to give you the heads up that I'm okay. I'm just having a routine surgery to help with an issue. Um, I'm not going to talk about the exact issue on here because I know it could be sensitive to some people, but I am you know, surgery in general. I, even like talking about some of the stuff makes, you know, makes my stomach queasy. So if you want to talk about it in private, that's fine. You can send me a message or send me an email, but just know, I promise I'm, everything is fine. It's just routine. It's going to bring my quality of life back. Um, hopefully I can be with my family more because the migraines were taking over my life. When I went to see the doctor, she asked about frequency of the migraines. And I said, well, let's see out of the last 17 days, I've had a migraine for 10 of them. That's not, that's not good. Um, so now I am headache free, but we need to solve the issue that was causing me to, or drove me to take the medicine in the first place, to, had the doctor prescribed in the first place. So anyways, after all of that, um, I hope that you will stick around, even if it takes me a month to come back or two months to come back. I hope that you found or saw something to inspire you um, to pick up a language and whip or maybe to try something new. Um, even if it's a 1940s pattern, because they are pretty scary. Um, we can talk about that when it's not so hot up in this room. I'll have, we'll have a conversation about those um, 1940s patterns later, um, more in depth. Um, but I hope that you um, get some crafting time in and you take time to enjoy your family when, when you can. Okay, so until next Sunday or the next time that I can come up here. Bye.